I like the girls who do. I like the girls who don't. I hate the girl who says she will, and then she says she won't. <laughs> but the girl I like the best of all, and I think you'll sound right, is the girl who says she never does, but she looks as though she... Yeah, she know what I do. <laughs> Listen, listen, here's one, here's one. I've got a dog, I've got a dog, and I take him with me everywhere I go. I had him with me about eight weeks ago at the Open Empire. I'm standing the corner of Kingsway. When a fella came up to me, he said, Max, that's a nice dog. I said, he's very intelligent. He said, what do you mean? I said, if you give the dog a shilling, he'll go and get the evening news and bring back 11 pence change. He said, don't be foolish. I said, give the dog a shilling. He gave the dog a shilling. I said, go on, evening news. And away went the dog. We waited for half an hour. The dog didn't come back. He said, where's your dog? I said, I don't know. He's never done it before. Never done it before. I said, we'd better go and look for him. We went along Piccadilly, and there was my dog walking along Piccadilly with his girlfriend. <laughs> I said, I can't understand it. He's never done it before. My pal said, well, perhaps he's never had the money. <laughs> listen, um, listen, listen. I met a fellow of mine the other day. I said, Charlie, they tell me you're married now. He said, that's right. I said, well, now you know what's what. <laughs> he said, what? I said, now you know what's what. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, if you're married, you must know what's what. He said, I think you're crazy. And he started walking home. And as he was walking home, he kept saying to himself, now you're married, now you know what's what. <laughs> well, when he got home that night, he got in the bedroom, the wife was in bed, so he took all his clothes off. <laughs> and he switched the light out. He didn't want to get out again, see? <laughs> And he was in the dark, and he was feeling around in the dark, you see. <laughs> and all of a sudden he said, what's that? <laughs> and the wife said, what's what? Here, here. <laughs> And there it was on the mantelpiece all the time. I look better since I came back off my cruise, don't I? No, I do look better. I was poorly. I was not poorly. <laughs> no, I was. I was. I was dying. Before I went away. I look nice now, don't I, Duck? Don't I? No, I, I feel better too. I liked it. It was nice. I'm going again next year. I want to go every year if I can because it's not. I had a cabin to myself. All the time I was there, a cabin to myself. And, and next to me, next to me, there was an old maid. She had a cabin to herself, too. So it was all right, wasn't I? <laughs> what, what? No, no. What, me? I don't, I don't. <laughs> no, honest, I don't, I don't. <laughs> well, when I... Look, and, and one night... <laughs> One night, this old maid, she started screaming and bawling and banging on her door. She can have a terrible noise. And the purser came along. He said, what's going on in here? She said, there are two men in my room. He said, well, what do you want me to do? She said, fling one of them out. <laughs> so he flung me out. Here, listen. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. You listen. <laughs> right. Father and son, father and son. The boy be about eight or nine. He might be nine or ten. We don't know. Who cares, anyway? Eight or nine. His father took him on a cattle show on Saturday afternoon where the farmers were buying the bulls and the cows, mostly bulls, when all of a sudden, the little boy saw a farmer go up to a bull and the farmer started feeling the bull all along the back. He was feeling it all down and all around, feeling him all over. <laughs> <laughs> and the little boy said, Daddy, what's he doing? And his father told him. His father said, he's feeling it to see if there's any meat on it. <laughs> if there's any meat on it, he's going to buy it. The boy said, thanks very much, Father, for telling me. Two or three weeks after, the boy went in to see his father. His father was having breakfast. His father said, what do you want? The boy said, I think the butler wants to buy the cook. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd like to say this, if I may. It's not really a speech, but I've been a bit of a bad lad in my time. <laughs> and I remember many years ago, my brother and I, who's two years younger than me, we went out together, and after two or three weeks, I said, Johnny, I've got a confession to make. He said, well, go in and tell your father. I went into the drawing room to see me dad. He was sitting in a deck chair. I said, Dad, I've got a confession to make. He said, was it, son? And I didn't like to tell him. He said, tell me, who was it? And I wouldn't tell him. He said, was it Mrs. Graham? I said, no, no. He said, was it Mrs. Mitchell? 
I said, no, I wouldn't crack on, you see. He said, was it Mrs. Smith? I said, no. He said, get out of the room. He was disgusted with me. I walked out of the room. My brother said, how'd you get on? Did he forgive you? I said, no, but he gave me three very good addresses. 